We're going to solve a reaction network problem with Excel. Now we have four differential equations that describe this reaction network. Let me go ahead and zoom in on those. And we have some parameters K1 and K2 in that reaction network. And those are going to be given to us. So we have these K1 and K2. And then we have concentrations of A, B, C, and D. And C is going to be an intermediate. And then B is also going to be involved in that second reaction. Uh, but A is only involved in the first reaction. And this sign right here means that it's irreversible. So as long as it goes A plus B, those two molecules combine to form C, it won't reverse and go C to B and A. Now, Excel is, we're going to use Euler's method there just to demonstrate a very simple way to integrate these differential equations. But uh, there are more uh, powerful tools like ODE int. Um, and then in MATLAB, uh, we have other tools like ODE23, ODE15S. Okay, so um, these would be preferred tools if you're going to do something that needs accuracy. But we're going to show a method, uh, Euler's method in Excel that's very simple and allows us to see kind of how these integrators work and uh, hopefully gain some insight into the system without necessarily being concerned a lot about accuracy. Okay, so uh, we have some of these initial conditions and, and uh, other things that we're going to need for this problem. So let me go ahead and just put this uh, problem statement off here to the right. And then what I'm going to do is uh, just open up Excel and start a new workbook. Okay, so within this workbook, we're going to put some of our data about our problem, like the initial conditions, for example. Okay, so here are the initial uh, conditions. And uh, I'm going to have C, A, not. Okay, C, concentration of B initial concentration of C initial and I'll make this just a little bit bigger um, let me go just a little bit bigger here so we can see it okay so, and then concentration of D initial okay and then we have K1 and K2 and then we'll also have Delta T if you want to change this uh, Delta to something that looks just a little bit better we can go to uh, home and let's see, I might need to expand this a little bit. Home, and then under the font type, uh, just do symbol. And that'll give you the Greek letter for it. Okay, the delta T. Okay, so let's do uh, 1, 1, 0, 0. Okay, so we have initially A and B, but no C and D. And then our rate constants are here, 1 and 1.5, and then 0.2. And this is going to be liters per mole uh, second and liters per mole second. And uh, this is going to be moles per liter. I'll go ahead and copy this one up. OK, so here's our, uh, you know, just the starting point. Now we're going to create a table here. And these are going to be our times. And so we're going to do 0. And then um, let's just go ahead and add the uh, so do e2 plus and then come down here and then hit f4 and it'll make that a static reference and so it'll always grab the one above it and then add the delta t to it and let's go down to uh, three okay we'll just go down to three seconds for our simulation time you can go ahead and delete the rest of those and then go back up okay if you again if you want to go all the way down or all the way up a column uh, on the data, just hit the control key and down or up. Now we're going to do the uh, concentration of, um, okay, so I don't want to retype all these, so let me do uh, copy. And then I'm going to come right here and come to home and select the little down button. And uh, you can select transpose, okay? And then you'll see that it transposed that vector. And let me just get rid of the zeros. Okay, so probably not the most efficient uh, way to do that, but just wanted to show you copying and pasting transpose. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're just going to get the initial conditions. 
Okay, and uh, what what will do here is this one needs to be a formula. I can't just um, you know copy that. But I, as I change those initial conditions, I want these top values to change because you'll see why later when I uh, try to maximize the selectivity. Okay, so I have those four, and then uh, this is going to be selectivity that we'll have in there later. And uh, what we're going to do now is go ahead and apply Euler's method. So once this is set up, we're going to uh, come back to our sheet here. And we're going to take this first equation right here. And dA dt is going to be a uh, okay, at time step 2 minus a at time step 1. Okay, That's going to be our concentration of a. Um, and divided by delta t. So that's going to be approximately our derivative d a d t as it's written there. Okay, and so we're going to just substitute that in and just solve for our next concentration by, uh, you know, whatever's on the right hand side, k1 a times b. Uh, we're just going to multiply over the delta t and uh, add uh, this concentration of a1. So we have, I'll just write a2 equals and then um, negative k1 a b. Okay, let me write that a little bit better. Okay, k1 a uh, times b times delta t plus a1. And then I'm also going to use a1 and b1 there. So this is called Euler's method, where I just approximate the derivative with a finite difference there. Uh, between the uh, next and the prior values. So let's go ahead and just type this one in here. Um, again, put Excel over just a little bit, and then we can see this uh, formula. Okay, I'll move this, make that smaller. There we go. Okay, so we've got um, this formula. So I'm going to do uh, equals, and then I'm going to put in parentheses negative and this is going to be k1. Don't forget to hit your f4 right there. Um, and then I'm going to multiply by the prior a value and the prior b value. And my parentheses, and then multiply by delta t. Hit f4 there, and then add the prior a value. OK, now I'm going to go ahead and fill this down. Um, and the way I can do that is because I had those static references there, um, it allowed me, it's going to allow me to fill this down. But you're going to see that this also depends on the b value that's currently equal to zero. And so we got to wait to do our b value as well. So these kind of depend on each other. Um, so let's go ahead and just do this formula again. Um, I'm just going to do whatever's on the right hand side of the equation. So that's going to be negative k1. Okay, times uh, a times b, okay, minus k2 times b times c, okay, times, and then I have my delta t, and then I add the prior cb value. Okay, go ahead and hit enter and then select that and go ahead and fill it down. I missed that. Okay, you gotta get this little thing with a black uh, little crosshairs like that and then you f double click it and it'll fill the rest of the formulas down for you down to where it makes sense. Okay, let's do this for C as well. Um, I'm just gonna copy this formula because it's pretty close but just with some positive signs there. Um, or actually just one of them is positive. Okay, so I can copy it, uh, do equals, and get rid of this extra equal sign. Okay, and then I uh, just need to adjust a couple things like uh, this G2 one is gonna be here. Uh, you know, maybe this didn't work out so well. Anyway, so I'm gonna get rid of this negative sign right here. And keep the negative sign here. Okay, times delta t, and then I'm going to have uh, h2 and this g2. 
right here is correct. And H2, let's just check and see if we had all of the values right. Okay, so I'm just going to go through it again. There's K1 right there. Uh, F2 is A, okay. And this H2 is going to be, oh, that's wrong right there. That's supposed to be a B. Okay, so I'm going to move this back to a G2. Okay, this one's going to be a K2. And then G2 is going to be my B value, and H2 is my C value. Okay, so there I go. I've got this one correct. Okay, now let's do our D. Okay, I'm not going to try to copy anything this time. Um, but I am going to need to make this just a little bit smaller, just so I can see some of those parameters over there. Okay, now we're going to do the, the Euler's method again. I'm going to do the right-hand side of the equation. K2 times B times C, um, parenthesis times our delta T, F4, plus the prior D value. Okay, let's fill this one down too. Okay, so there's our D uh, concentration as well. Now let's um, do our selectivity uh, as well. We have our selectivity is just defined by uh, this, S equals, okay, so I'm just gonna say S equals the concentration of C divided by the concentration of C plus the concentration of D. Okay, we got division by zero, okay, because those C and D values are equal to zero initially. And uh, there, if I fill it down, I have numbers for the rest of them. I'm just going to put a one here, just override that formula. Okay, so now we have, uh, we just want to create a plot. Plot the concentrations of A, B, C, and D, and S as functions of time on the same plot. Um, here we go, We're, I'm going to select this uh, whole table right here, and then insert, and uh, create a scatter plot. Okay, so it just created my plot for me, and then you can add uh, you know, labels. Um, if you come here to format or design, okay, on design you can add, for example, an axis title. Okay, primary, horizontal, and then it lets you edit that. And so this one is going to be a time in seconds. Okay, and then you go ahead and insert another one. Um, actually, you got to come under design, add chart element, and then axis titles, and you'll do a primary vertical as well. And uh, you know it's kind of typing sideways. It's a little bit confusing there. But uh, let's go ahead and just type concentration moles per liter. Okay, so there we have it. Okay, so uh, what's the final value of the selectivity? Uh, we'll just look down here, it's about 0.49. Okay, so part D is assuming the values of C and D naught and K1 and K2 are fixed. How can you increase the final value of the selectivity given the above reactions? So we want to try to maximize this value right here. Um, let me go ahead and just move this out of the way, and I'll just show this a little bit uh, bigger here. So we want to try to maximize this very final value um, for selectivity. Um, this one, okay, I'll just go ahead and highlight that one. That's the one we want to try to maximize, but we can adjust these two values. So let's go ahead and use Solver to do that. Go Data, Solver. If you don't have Solver, um, I'm going to close that really quick. Go, make sure you go to Options, and then um, go to Add-ins, and then go Excel Add-ins, and make sure the Solver add-in is selected, and click OK. OK, it should be under Data, and you'll see Solver over here. So we want to maximize Okay, this cell right here, uh, by changing this, these two right here, we can't have negative concentration, so make sure that one is selected, and then click Solve. Okay, so this said divide by zero. Okay, I didn't like this. Uh, it 
had a, a problem uh, finding that if it uh, we allowed it to go all the way to zero. So let's add a constraint there as well. I'm going to add a constraint that this these two cell references have to be greater than or equal to let's say 0.1. Okay, let's just do that, and then we'll solve it. Hmm. Oh wow, the selectivity got huge. Um, Partially, partially because my integration tolerance just wasn't very good. Okay, so um, let's add another constraint. I'm just going to let uh, these two also be less than or equal to two. Let's say that's the maximum concentration I can achieve in this system. Okay, so there we go. We got a uh, higher selectivity. It put the concentration of A as high as it could go and the concentration of B as low as it could go. And that would increase the selectivity of our reaction. Okay, so the favoring the C concentration. In the end, the C concentration is going to be much higher than the D concentration. And you can see that right here. You didn't get much to react uh, because not much of the A eventually reacted, but you had more C that reacted in the end.